Vladimir Putin first came to power. The summer of 99 had Bill Clinton as US president, and Christina Aguilera was topping the charts with Genie in a Bottle. The digital world as we know it was in its infancy, and relations with the West were nothing like today. Reuters' Andrew Osborne in Moscow. One and the attacks on the Twin Towers, Mr Putin was one of the first to call then-President Bush and offer his sympathy. And not just words, he backed up those words with concrete help in Afghanistan against the Taliban. And he also allowed the United States to establish a military presence in Central Asia. Central Asia, traditionally regarded by Russia as its own back. Ten years later, the same year we first saw Putin shirtless on horseback, Hillary Clinton presented Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov with this gift, the infamous reset button. Supposed to reset their relationship, maybe be friends again. It didn't work. Russia annexed Ukraine's Crimea in 2014. The West imposed sanctions. Flash forward to allegations of election meddling and the rest is history. It's now hard to imagine that there was once a time when a US president, namely George Bush, affectionately referred to the Russian leader as Putin. -put. The home front also saw radical change. Because previously, uh, state news, Russian state news, that's where most people here uh, uh, get their information, even now. But that now has a competitor in the form of internet. So there is a divide here. Many Russians think, yes, it's been great when we've seen falling real incomes, but there are other older Russians in particular, and indeed some young Russians, who uh, look back uh, and know about the 1990s and think that was actually a chance for freedom. Mr. Putin came to power, and really those hopes, those hopes, those early hopes of democracy and of freedom, of freedom of speech, of freedom